Welcome back to the Brewvolutions. Today we are going to do a lot of interesting things. First of all, we're going to review this beer right here. Lagunitas. This is the Undercover Investigation Shutdown Ale. Um, we're also going to teach you about the brewing process. So, without ado, let's crack open this beer and review it. So Lagunitas is one of the better beer companies that I really like to get into. Um, now they're from California. And just a lot of the beers that they make, it's really like put full hearted into it. Um, um, it has an ABV of 9.6% and an IBU of 66.6%. For any of you religious nuts out there, yeah, that could be a hellish sign for you, but honestly, it's a hellishly good beer. It definitely has its nice, like, bitter notes to it. Um, the maltiness is really the full-on body effect that you're going to get from it. Uh, as you can see, it's clearly a nice, dark brown, like copper color to it, and it just reflects so much towards the body of it. Um, like, opposed to a normal IPA, this is a lot sweeter than what you would normally have. And it finishes off with a nice, bitter, bitter, like, slap to your face, but other than that, it's definitely one that any newbie can get into, I want to say craft beer with. But... Still, in regards to limited release, I'd say check it out if you haven't had the chance to yet. <sighs> Alright, so now, an introduction to the brewing process. So first of all, we start off with our plants. We start off with barley. I know with some breweries, they like to implement rice or other um, grains that are gonna, you know, produce sugar. They're gonna do that. They're gonna take the cheapest product on the market at the time, such as rice, and make it into their beer. That's pretty much how they do business. They're not a brewery that wants to make good beer. They're a brewery that wants to sell a product. And we can see that because of the fan loyalty to Budweiser. And as well as the quality of their product. You try Bud Light, you try Budweiser, you try Bud Light Lime. I'm not going to say they all taste the same. They all obviously taste different. But it's still the same business purpose going back into your head. You taste it, it's not going to be anywhere close to what the quality is of what a craft brewer would do. Um, this is why they are starting to buy out companies such as Goose Island um, and making their craft brews into their own products. So, uh, in the, the community of the craft brew um, area, we call those crafty. Anyways, getting back into this. Um, so anyways, going back into the whole process of malting. Um, we have water being added into the whole um, seeds of barley right here. Usually it's a flatbed. A flatbed that they just add water into. They start germinating. They start growing sprouts. Uh, as you can see right here. Seeds all closed up. It's got to open up with all that moisture, all the water. Turn into this. Um, this has also been roasted. That happens in the malting process. Uh, and that's going to differentiate such as like a stout or porter from like an IPA or pale ale. The roasting changes flavors deep within the, the barley itself. After that, it's sent into the mill. And that mill, what that's going to do is going to grind it up, get all the shell, the hard casing out of it, and then send it into the mashing process. 
that's pretty much going to help release enzymes, release proteins, as well as releasing the sugars within the barley itself. The sugars, most notably, are going to help with the alcohol content of the beer. These first parts are still extremely important, but once you start milling it, that's when everything starts getting interesting. Um, because after that, it's sent into grain bags, and those grain bags are sent to the mash tun. And now a mash tun is the holder of a mash. The mash is most notably um, the grains plus water. Uh, very, very warm water that's um, stirred around a bit to release all the sugars, the enzymes, the proteins, get it into what will become the wort. The wort is the liquid that is going to become the beer. Uh, the mash is just the liquid with all the junk, meaning the, um, the, what is that, with the barley and all those other grains, depending on the brew you're trying to brew at, at the time. That's going to be the mash. That gets sent out as a spent grain. Um, such companies such as the Boston Beer Works, they like taking those spent grains and making them into an appetizer. But anyway, so spent grains go do that. They either go to people or they go to animals. Um, and then the wort comes out of it. That's the liquid that has all those awesome nutrients, all the things that make beer beer. Um, that goes over to the kettle. Now, while in the kettle, hops are added. Hops being one of the most important things about beer. Hops determine the bitterness of a beer. You can have an IPA, a strong IPA, and it's all determined on the amount of hops that you put into it. Um, I want to say, during this whole kettling process, while you're boiling the wort, um, the amount of hops that you use definitely determines what kind of beer that you want to do. When you're in the kettle, the whole point of boiling is that it's sterilizing the beer. The beer is being sterilized while you boil it. And this is a huge thing in the Middle Ages when their children would not be able to to drink water, but they were able to drink beer, because beer was sanitary, people still got their hydration and alcohol at the same time. Cooling down your um, potential brew, well that's going to involve, if you do it rapidly, which is most efficient, uh, you'll take a copper coil, send a lot of cold water through, it'll come out piping hot, but still, send that in through your sink, and pretty much it'll help move on to the next stage of the game, which is fermenting. <clears throat> now, fermenting in a large-scale brewery is going to stay in a tank like this, the fermenting tank. That is always nice. Um, home-scale brewers, it's got to go into probably whatever you can fit into. <laughs> um, but once it goes there, I want to say it's like a week, two weeks, depending on the beer, depending on what you're looking to get out of it. It's got to ferment for a week to two weeks to however long you want it to ferment. Alright, so the maturing tank pretty much what this is going to do. It's going to improve and remove unwanted flavors. And essentially what it does is make the beer better. And it sits there until it needs to go to our next stage, which is... either filtering or bottling slash canning. The alcohol that the yeast makes is one of the, the most important parts. Um, it defines the flavor. It also makes sure that it's converting all of the sugars into farts that are going to be CO2. 
and as well as converting that sugar into alcohol. And that's essentially how you get your ABV, your alcohol by volume. Um, so some companies do filter their beer, which would get rid of that cloudy, that tasteful everything about a beer. Make it clear and shit. But anyways, that was the brewing process, so cheers. It's beyond 5,000 years work. Thank you for viewing another one of these videos of mine. Um, I know it's been a while. It's probably been like three or four weeks, but still, like, I love the support that y'all are giving me. Hit subscribe, hit like, uh, say something in the comments what you want to do. Um, I'm gonna next time get back into reviewing more than just one beer, but this beer is a pretty bomb ass beer. Lagunitas undercover. Still have the bottle right here. It's one of the better brews that I've tried in a while. Um I wanna get into imports soon. But until then we're gonna have to deal with the local stuff just cause it's here. I wanna promote America. And our craft beer movement. But anyways, cheers. Internet would kill me for that. <clears throat>